Hi, I'm Honey. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do an easy watercolor landscape with misty trees. Let's get started. This is a really fun and easy tutorial for beginners because it can look very complicated, but it's actually very easy because it's only composed of two elements, the sky and the trees. So once you know how to do one tree, you just basically repeat making trees over and over again. This is also good practice for painting trees because you're going to be painting lots of trees. You're welcome to use any supplies that you have on hand. We're only going to be using two colors, a black and a green. For my black, I'm using Neutral Tint by Daniel Smith. And then for my green, I'm using Undersea Green from the Daniel Smith Secondary Set. All the supplies I'm using are listed in the description below. First, we'll do the background, which is the sky. We're going to do a gray, cloudy sky that's very foggy and mysterious. We'll add a lot of water to our neutral tint to make a really light gray. In watercolor, to make any color lighter, you just add water to the color. So if you add water to black, it becomes a light gray. What we want to do is add lots and lots of water to make a really light gray. Once you're satisfied with the lightness of the color, we're going to do a wash that's not even on the page. Making it very wet and watery gives it that cloudy effect. So make sure you use tons of water. I alternate between grabbing water from my jar and grabbing the paint mixture that I made. I'm doing short, almost circular strokes with my round brush, making sure there are no hard edges and no straight lines. I start from the top where it's going to be darker and then keep going down making sure that the water doesn't dry. About halfway down it's going to be lighter and then I'm just going to add some more darkness to the top just to differentiate between the darker top portion and the lighter middle portion. Then when I get to the bottom it's going to be mostly clean water. You just want to make sure you wet that part as well so there are no hard edges where the water stops. As a general rule for skies, the top portion is usually the darkest part and the lowest portion is usually the lightest part. I'm just grabbing some more paint and dropping it in in a wavy fashion so it looks like there's clouds there. Just remember that watercolor dries about one or two shades lighter. So whatever you're seeing now, it's going to be lighter than that when it dries. So that's why I'm darkening some spots so that I know that whenever it dries, that we can still see the clouds that I want to show. So when I'm dropping in the color, I'm just doing it very gently. I'm not roughly scrubbing the paper because you don't want to ruin the paper. It's very delicate when it's wet. So just make sure that you're not scrubbing hard or overworking. And then I'm just making sure there are no hard edges or straight lines because those look very weird in clouds. You want everything to be circular and round and soft. I try to limit the amount of times that I put the brush across the same part of the paper because it looks less fresh when you keep going over the same area over and over. We're going to let the paper partially dry. While the paper is still a little bit damp, we're going to use our black paint and drop in some trees in the top portion of the paper. You want the paper to still be wet so that the trees get fuzzy and look out of focus, but not too wet that it's just a blob. How I'm doing these pine trees is that I'm doing a line from top to bottom, just a straight line, and then I'm doing brush strokes around it with very small brush strokes at the top and it gets bigger as it goes down lower. It's like a triangle shape where the top part is pointy and the bottom part is larger but I'm doing it with brush strokes, with smaller brush strokes. 
these are the really far away background trees so nothing's really super defined at this point you want it to be just suggestion of trees at this point it doesn't have to be super detailed it shouldn't be super detailed because it's just a hint of a tree in the background at the bottom of the trees I'm just adding some light gray and adding lots of water to fade them out and blend it in so that it looks like you're looking through the clouds to see the trees behind the clouds we're starting with a background tree so they're gonna be small in size they're gonna be smaller than the foreground trees because they're in the distance and things look smaller from far away but within that small size you still want to vary up the sizes of those background trees so some are smaller some are larger some are medium-sized trees the tree trunks don't also need to be coming from the exact same plane so you don't want the starting point of your trees to be a straight line you want some of them to be starting higher some of them starting lower, some of them starting somewhere in the middle. That way your trees are not uniform all in a row. For the branches of the trees, I'm keeping my strokes very light and loose. It's really important to just be random with it. Just kind of randomly put your brush side to side and not think too much about every line and not define the tree so much. It looks more natural that way. The trees don't also have to be perfectly straight. They can lean to the right or lean to the left a little bit because in nature, trees are not perfectly straight. Usually they're a little bit crooked, a little bit bent, and they're very imperfect because they're uh, organic. So just keep adding trees on that line you can skip some trees and have some spaces where there are no trees and you can vary up the spacing of them I'm just adding clean water to the bottom making sure there are no hard edges and just fading everything out so it's all cloudy earlier I added trees to this side but it was too wet so you can't really see them so I'm just adding them again now that it's just a little bit drier but still wet and now you can see them and then I'm going to the other side to define some of the tops of the other trees on this side sometimes I like to just go and just add more height to trees I find it's easier to do it that way and just add to the other trees I'm jumping around from left to right and back and forth so I can kind of vary up the trees and make sure some are smaller some are taller some are spaced out farther some are closer together so sometimes I'm inserting trees in between other trees sometimes I'm doing a taller tree sometimes if the trees look too even I'll just make one tree taller it's fine if some of the trees don't actually look like trees because some of them aren't super defined here on the right side but that's okay because your mind kind of fills in the blanks of those details so just like suggesting a little bit of figure in that area makes it so that your brain tries to work out the puzzle of what that is for this first batch of trees they don't necessarily all have to come from the same line some can be in a different row so there could be one row of trees and then there could be another row of trees behind them you just got to make sure that the ones in the back are smaller and that you fade out the bottom part of the trees so that you can't see where the trees are coming from because you're seeing them through the clouds
once you're happy with how the first batch of trees look, you can let this dry and we're going to go to the next step. I'm preparing to work on my middle ground now. I'm using the undersea green and mixing it with water and then just mixing it with a little bit of neutral tint to neutralize it just a little bit, make it less bright. So on the upper left side, some of that I feel like is not faded enough, so I'm going to grab a paper towel and just blot it to kind of fade it out just a bit so that that edge is not too hard. Before we continue, we want to make sure the paper is completely dry and how we check that the paper is dry, you can use the back of your hand and touch the paper with the back of your hand and if it's still a little bit cool to the touch, then it's not completely dry yet. You want to make sure it's not cool to the touch. So we're just doing the same thing except we're starting from a dry paper. The paper has to be dry completely so that the edges will be defined. These trees are just gonna be slightly larger than your background trees. So we wanna make sure our trees are all different. We want some trees to be thick, some are thin, some are tall, some are short, some are fuller, some are less full. So make sure you have a lot of variation in the trees so they don't all look the same. Your paint color at this point should be slightly darker than your background trees so kind of like a mid-range but it's not going to be as dark as your foreground trees are going to be again i'm adding clear water to the bottom of the trees to blend that out so that it's nice and soft if you feel you have too much water you can tilt the board as well to let the water flow down So again, we're just adding lots of trees. It's just really super repetitive at this point. You just repeat the same thing over and over, but just vary it up so that each tree looks very individual. And I try to make sure there's a lot of white space. Whenever I paint the tree, like around the branches, you want to be able to have some white areas in there. So it's not just like a triangle, it's actually there's like highlights there or like space where you can see through the trees. You also want to make sure that your line of trees here in the middle ground is not echoing the line of trees in your first row because you don't want them to look super exactly similar. So I'm trying to like vary it up. It's kind of hard. Like right now I can see it's it looks like they're kind of very similar. So I'm trying to vary it up and just change it up so it doesn't look too duplicated.
So sometimes the line of trees go down, sometimes the line of trees go up in the same plane because they are kind of in a mountain or something or in a hill. So you don't want them just be in a straight line, they're kind of all over the place. I'm just going back to the previous row of trees and adding some definition because I feel like it needs a little bit more there. So I'm just going back to the previous layer. I'm just making sure to blend it out again. I'm also going to add another layer in front a little bit so that it's not just one layer of trees, it's like two rows of trees overlapping each other in the middle ground. So that just adds a little bit more complexity to the piece and just adds more it's like there's more stuff going on than there is, but you're just really adding um, more trees. And the trees don't have to be a whole row of trees. It can be like little clusters of trees little groupings of trees. Um, they could be like three trees in a cluster or like two trees in a cluster. It doesn't have to be like a full complete row.
again I'm just going back to the previous layer and just adding a little bit more definition now that I am seeing the next layers I can see that the previous layers didn't have enough so I'm just adding um, just a little bit to define it a little bit more Let that dry completely, and then we're going to start with our foreground trees. This batch of trees are going to be the darkest in color, and they're going to be the most defined, and they're also going to be the largest of the trees. Make sure these trees are not spaced equally. You want the spacing to be different as well. You want the sizes to be different. You want each tree to be individually different from each other. So these foreground trees are a lot more defined because we're starting from a dry paper, they're a lot more crisp, they're bigger so you can see a lot more detail, there's a lot more spaces in between the branches, it's just a lot more closer to the viewer so there's a lot more detail in it. But still being very loose and painterly. I'm going to make this one really, really tall. For the foreground trees, because they're closer to the viewer, there's a lot more variation in height. So for example, if you're looking at a group of trees and you're very close to the trees, you'll probably see that some trees are taller than others more clearly than if you were from far away looking at far away trees, then those trees probably look more similar in height compared to the trees that are closer to you. So 
So aside from varying up the size of the trees, I'm also varying up the value of the trees. Some, some trees are lighter than others. Some trees are darker than others. And that just helps with creating um, variation as well. And that also differentiates one tree from the tree right next to it. So for the front trees, their bottoms are cut off by the cropping of the painting. So you're not seeing the feet of the trees here. They're peeking out from under the painting. I feel like I want these trees to be a little bit taller so I'm just adding some height to that tree because I feel like the middle part of my composition is very bare so I'm trying to fill up that space so I'm making the trees taller to fill up that space. And also adding some trees in between other trees to fill up those gaps.
Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video and found it useful, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. If you're having any issues with your painting, make sure to leave a question in the comments below and I'll try to answer as many questions as I can. Have a great day.